Eh. Watu waache kulalamika mambo bado. Wanalalamika nini mapema? Eh. Ama ni aje mambo bado. Stand by a stinging statement from the clergy president William Ruto and his government Aaron Overdrive as they unleash string of rebuttals, denials and explanations on why the Catholic Church was wrong. Government must protect the life of every human person in Kenya as stipulated in our constitution of the Republic of Kenya article 26. The government must take the lead in following the law which the leadership took an oath to uphold and defend at all times. A culture of lies, NHIF, unkept promises and misplaced priorities. The culture of lies is swiftly replacing the integrity and respect that Kenyans deserve. Basically, it seems that truth does not exist, and if it does, it's only what the government says. Unfortunately, it seems that the Kenyans have helplessly tolerated the lies told to them constantly by politicians. Kenyans must learn not to applaud or validate the lies or validate the lies that the politicians tell them, but rather must resolve to seek and be led by the truth. President William Ruto yesterday pushed back against accusation leveled by the clergyman on Thursday, which slammed his two-year-old administration for failing Kenyans perpetrating ill detrimental to the soul of the nation. In very response to the Kenyan Conference of Catholic Bishops, Ruto called on leaders and Kenyans to stick to the truth and only share facts when engaging public discourse. We are here today to do this together. And I want to ask all of us, leaders, the clergy, Kenyans, to work together towards a nation that we can all be proud of. And even as we engage in public discourse on matters that are important to the people of Kenya, we must be careful to be factual, lest we become victims of the things we accuse others of doing. <laughs> I, know you, I know you know what I mean. <laughs> Finally, go forth, therefore, with the confidence of someone empowered here at Tangaza University, ready to teach minds, to touch hearts, and to transform lives everywhere you go. May God be with you, and may you honor his will by living up to your purpose. God bless you. God bless our great country, Kenya. And God bless Tangaza Asante Nisa. On Thursday, the bishops called out President Ruto's administration for what they termed as a deeply strange culture of lies, corruption, and fulfilled promises and misplaced priorities. Through a televised address, KCCB, led by this chairperson, Archbishop Maurice Muhatia, accused the state of burying its head in the sand while Kenyans were dealing with killings, abduction, forced disappearances, overtaxation, unemployment, and disturbing gaps in the implementation of the com competence-based curriculum education system, as well as the transition from NHIF to the social health authority share. Culture of lies, NHIF, unkept promises, and misplaced priorities. The culture of lies is swiftly replacing the integrity and respect that Kenyans deserve. Basically, it seems that truth does not exist, and if it does, it's only what the government says. Unfortunately, it seems that the Kenyans have helplessly tolerated the lies told to them constantly by politicians. Kenyans must learn not to applaud or validate the lies.
The clergy also took a swipe at politicians for advancing politics of self-interest and political wrangles which they said risked balkanizing the country. The cleric's father claimed that the government had reneged on its promise to clear as mounting billions of shillings or to faith-based hospitals under the now defunct National Health Insurance Fund. Moreover, the bishops were displaced by the laxity in the war against craft and delay in addressing reported abduction, disappearances, and killings of Kenyans by security personnel. The statement delivered at around midday Thursday would, however, jolt the Kenya Kwanza administration into action, favorably defending its achievements over the last two years. Yesterday, government spokesperson Isaac Mauro dismissed as lies the statement by the Catholic Church, which castigated the state and elected leaders for failing to address issues affecting Kenyans. The government spokesman urged the bishops to dialogue with the government instead of relying on propaganda, innuendos, and imaginations, saying the government is supporting progress on matters of public interest. But I want to assure you without a doubt that we are focused on delivering our agenda because government exists in perpetuity. And for your information, we all rally behind His Excellency President William Ruto as the head of state and head of government. The office of the government spokesperson is under the, the executive office of the president, under the head of public service, as a national government communication center. We work in the presidency directly to amplify the key achievements and developments within the presidency. So we rally behind President William Ruto and we will deliver. Maura said the government has been steady fast in trying to fulfill the promises made to Kenyans during election year, including protecting the lives of people. On corruption, Maura said the government has initiated several measures which have borne fruit, cited the cover of 28 billion Kenya shillings since the Kenya Kwanza administration assumed office. Among the government's proposals, Maura said the amendments to the Evidence Act and Criminal Procedure Code to hasten investigation and prosecution of corruption cases, as well as Witness Protection Act to overhaul the protection of whistleblowers. More claimed payment of the debt owed to the healthcare providers in the country, amounting to 19 billion Kenya shillings, for which the faith based hospital should be a beneficiary. In a multi prolonged approach, the government went on to the defensive and used cabinet meeting to highlight its success. A dispatch from the cabinet stated that it had dispersed 5 billion Kenya shillings to hospitals in the past month to address the concerning massive layoffs by multinational companies due to the high cost of doing business. Cabinet stated that 100,000 Kenyans have secured jobs abroad. Cabinet further highlighted key positive economic indicators such as an inflation which it said stood at 2.7% last month. This is the lowest rate since 2007. Cabinet Secretaries for Education Julius Ogab and Health Deborah Brass issued statements to serve as explainers. Ogab denied the bishop's claims that the country's education sector is in crisis and on the verge of collapse, noting that CBC and high education funding are working. On the issue I know that is uh, challenging to the public as we speak of the new funding model. The funding model has been in existence for 29 years. The only thing that has changed is that the means testing instrument was adjusted and reviewed to ensure that those children who need the government support most benefit most from the government funds. So that children of those who can afford, such as myself, can bear my rightful share of the school burden. And we've created a portal where we've allowed the students to appeal so that if you have data, information, to show that you've been put in the wrong band, we are working every single minute to reband you. Because the policy is no child, not, no child should miss school because of money. We begin with that. So going forward, I can assure the country that within the next few weeks, next few days, we are going to resolve that matter and each and every child 
who deserves to be in school will be because we are doing 100% transition.